This one's name is Peppa, and it's not because I talk, come from Boston, I talk like that. It's spelled P-E-P-P-A after a little cartoon pig that my son and my 20-month-old daughter like to watch. So they named it Peppa. This one was actually born at our place. It's an African pygmy hedgehog. Uh, there are different subspecies, of course, and then there's the European hedgehog, which is bigger and brown. Uh, these are cool little animals. They used to be classified as, in, as insectivores, and uh, most scientists have taken that order away, just kind of say that, that, that doesn't even exist anymore, and now they list them as omnivores. Uh, they, will, they love bugs. Bugs are their absolute favorite. Uh, in the wild, I have video of these guys in the wild eating scorpions, um, eating tarantulas, eating insects that I don't know what they were. Uh, you know, eating small snakes. These guys will pretty much eat anything. In our uh, center, they get a very high quality. We buy the best cat and dog foods for animals that eat cat and dog food. We buy the best that we can buy, and we do lots. My veterinarian happens to be very involved with research on cat and dog food, so sometimes it switches. And then he gets some mealworms, and for exercise, they get crickets. Um, in the nice weather, uh, my kids like to uh, have grasshopper hedgehog fights. So uh, sometimes, uh, Dad, we caught a grasshopper. I think this one can really beat the hedgehog. It's like, I don't think so, but if you want to try it, go ahead. So uh, it's good exercise. So at night, every night, I'll go over and throw a few crickets in their exhibit so they run around. They do use exercise wheels. Um, they're reported mostly in the African savannas from a lot of the literature I've seen. But I have friends that uh, live in South Africa, and they said these things are everywhere. Uh, what, if you work at, 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 uh, um, at my Animal Adventures site uh, uh, or for my speaking company, uh, you get to travel. Um, I don't really pay for it, but I give you the time off. Or, you know, um, people travel uh, all over the world that work with us. I have a big cat expert that travels all over the world working with cats. Uh, every year, some of our um, college-age students uh, and high school students go to South and Central America and different places. And um, one of the, uh, the women that works for us, when she was in Africa, she said these were not that hard to find this time. Three years ago, she said she didn't see many. And this time, she was looking for them, and, and they were pretty easy to come by. They're nocturnal. They have spines. Now, I've, I've read a bunch of times that they have as many as 5,000 spines. I can't verify it. I have grounded my kids and go, go in the room, and you can come out when you count the spines on the hedgehog, you know. But then you open up the door and you yell a bunch of numbers at them, you know, being, the, oh. being that guy. <laughs> 112, 15, 70, 90. Dad! We're never coming out. That's true, you're not. So, um, <laughs> well, you give them the millipede. I know how many legs are on that. You come out when you come up with the same number I have, you know. 600 and something. But it um, could be 5,000 spines. They don't have, they call them spines, not quills. The quills on a porcupine are, are made to come out easy, and the quills will have a little barb on the end. They stick through you and pull off. A lot of people say, no, no, porcupines shoot their quills. I've seen that. But anything you see on Looney Tunes or Warner Brothers, I wouldn't put into your, I, I, I wouldn't put that in your research paper. Um, you know, I know, I know. I always thought turtles could run on two legs, you know, and outrun the bunny, but it turned out that that turtle was cheating. If you guys saw that episode, they were like all his cousins racing Bugs Bunny. Did you guys see that? There's like 40 turtles to beat one rabbit, so that's actually not, it's actually not true. The, the hare is faster than the turtle. Um, but these guys, what they do is they have a muscle that runs from here to here, and the way I usually explain it to keep it simple, because I have a simple mind, is just if you flex your fist, you know, you flex, they'll flex the muscle, the spines will stand up, an animal messes with them, and they'll hiss, and they'll actually uh, hop into them. They also mark that territory uh, a couple of ways. They can do it with urine, which is pretty common, but they also will foam with the mouth. And some people think that they foam with the mouth just for marking, but there is a lot of uh, studies, and I think they're going to find something here, where they actually foam with the mouth if it's a real crabby, frightened hedgehog, and it looks like they're putting some, you know, product in their hair, and they'll put the foam on their, uh, on their spines, and then hit something with it. And I know a person who went to the hospital, another animal educator friend of mine, where her hedgehog did that and she went to the hospital with a severe infection and uh, her hand got all swollen out. And I've been, you know, had these guys break my skin a thousand times and never had anything. Um, and I have read some uh, reports by some people in Africa that they've seen these guys infect certain animals. It was a case of a monitor lizard, a savanna monitor lizard, um, biting um, a hedgehog. I'm getting this from a source uh, over in Africa, so I don't, I don't know if it's in print, but I do believe this person. And the uh, hedgehog actually got the spines in the um, monitor's uh, eyes, nose, and mouth. And they said the monitor's head blew up like it was pumped up full of water and eventually died. So um, there must be something to it, but I, I don't know exactly what it is. 
you know, but I know there's some studies being done. And they, they got this extra skin. My kids call it Grammy skin, you know, so <laughs> kids are so cute and honest, aren't they? Look, okay, that's got skin like Grammy's arm, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. So now they go up to the arm, they try to fold it and, you know, hide the little G.I. Joe things in there. But, uh, so they can fold up. This can help them sleep. This can also, you know, protect them from predators. They just, you know, this one is super friendly. 